Even if we don't feel it, even if we don't think it, even if we can't experience it or touch it or understand it, he is good and he is there. He's walking right alongside you. Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one. Obliterating social norms and overrunning the cultural corrosion with righteous rhetoric and common sense. This is Overflow, the extended conversation covering life, today's newsbreakers, and the occasional banter with the most interesting members of the human species. Signaling from the conservative chasm of Central Valley, California, it's the outlaws your conscience warned you about. Let's welcome your hosts, Loto and Phil Bill. Welcome everybody to another Overflow EXT. Philville, man, we are in episode 21, brother. 21. Praise God. Oh, my goodness. Wow, 21, bro. Uh, but, you know, before we get on with this show, brother, I, I, legal now, I right? think the last, yes, yes, definitely legal. I, but I've always been legal, brother. I've never done anything illegal. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just uh, I, I, I think I think we need to do some reflection on the last uh, episode, brother, because it was such a heavy, uh, heavy topic. And we'll definitely be getting into more of it, uh, this one. But. You know, I just I, I just want to appreciate everybody. Philville, you've been telling me about the good news, you know, about viewership, you know, and then we also have, you know, people responding, you know, and commenting on on, on what, you know, the last episode, you know, how, how much of a blessing has been to them, brother. Yeah. Yes, it, it's we're seeing those things. But I I know for me, we talked about yeah podcast being therapeutic. Yes. It, we talked about things that when we talked to our, our closest closest friends, our circle of family, mm -hmm. but publicly, even off, uh, for me, you know, we, even for me, I minister in, in ministry quite mm -hmm. often and share things, but I never talked about this. And, and it was uh, a new thing for me to share something so personal and so private. Uh, but you and I talked about, we wanted our story to, to resonate with some out there. And we know that yeah. there's a why and why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it was such a blessing, brother. And I knew, you know, we, we had to do it, you know, uh, like I mentioned, you know, that November is the, is that month, you know, that, that it's always really uh, on my heart, you know, those yeah. who have lost ones, you know, who has, who have experienced and, and honestly continue to experience, you know, grief and loss. So, you know, I'm so glad that we got to do it, man. So glad that it's been uh, a huge blessing to others. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you got to share your story, you know, uh, and like you said, you know, it's definitely therapeutic. You know, I was, I wanted to leave something for my daughter to look back and hear the, hear those stories. And so to have it documented, you know, in mm -hmm. that documenting my life, our family history was important. And I, and I know we, we had fun, even though we're, we're sharing some personal and very kind of like some, some deep tragedies. And we were still able to laugh and to find a joy in, in the Lord and our relationship with, with him. Amen. And even 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 have some some fun last week, and, and those of you who haven't seen it, please go back and watch that. Absolutely, man, and I'm super excited, brother, about this episode. You know, just uh, just just what's waiting for us, family. You're definitely gonna want to tune in. Matter of fact, you want to share this with your loved ones. You want to share this with those who you know are, are struggling with the the issue that we're talking about. You know, as a matter of fact, Philville, why don't you drop the drip? All right, I'm looking forward to a special day today and Thanksgiving weekend. First, we'll be talking about the shooting the tragedy that did take place at, at, a, at a club. And we'll have an update on the 25 sheriffs injured in L.A. There is also happening some news with Kanye West who's back in the spotlight. Mm. And, of course, the Elon Musk update. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Uh, there's some news on the Power Rangers front. And for some political updates, we'll be talking about Carrie Lake and Mike Pence, the former VP. And of course, uh, Geek Out Corner with Philville. I will be talking about uh, my experience, follow up with Black Panther Wakanda forever, not Anaconda Loto. And of course, we'll be having the extended conversation, a part two of last week, Loto. Yes, as a matter of fact, we have a special guest coming in today. Uh, she's a family and marriage therapist, specialty in uh, in grief and loss, Yovana Monroe. And I cannot wait till you hear this this interview. I mean, my, I I mean just from from the beginning, Philville, when she explained the difference between depression and grief, you guys are going to be blessed. And before all that, let's let's uh, talk a little bit about what's been happening lately in our lives, Lodo. I know that you had an event take place at JJC with the girls. This yeah. Thanksgiving se yes. season. Tell us about it, man. It was awesome, bro. We uh, so for the girls, you know, at Juvenile Hall, 
you know, they, they, they almost get nothing uh, when it comes to events, you know, and, and special activities and all that. So uh, I'm just thankful for all the agencies in there that takes time to do things uh, for them. Uh, and we actually got our turn to do something. You know, we, oh, we, uh, we were able to hold Thanksgiving dinner with the ladies, you know, in JJC. And it was just a fantastic time, Philville. It's, it's, um, it started off with a great dinner. Shout out to uh, Boston, you know, mm-hmm. about a Thanksgiving dinner uh, catered by them. And then, uh, I mean, it went from a dinner to uh, with music. Pastor Cindy got up there and and, and just, you know, bought the word of God, you know. Yeah. And then uh, the, the night ended actually with girls, you know, going back to worship and, and the girls, Philville, they, they just stood up. You know, the thing about doing the hall is, you know, we, we um, you get nervous when things like that happen. You don't want girls just to jump up because, you know, you know, but these girls stood up with their hands up. You know, yeah. and, uh, and and they just started worshiping God. Next thing you know, you know, we have girls singing on the microphone and then uh, and just really just having an awesome time giving wow. thanks to God, you know, uh, yeah. in, in prayer, you know, in song and sing. I mean, it was just it was a fantastic time, brother. Yeah, I heard that you guys had the powerhouse team. Like you said, Pastor Cindy and mm-hmm. Saeli and yeah, and, yeah. And, and Austin, we had Austin all, in yeah, there, yeah, yes, yeah, Tati, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was awesome, brother. So, yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was uh, on Monday, and then uh, man, and then we this weekend, you oh, know, it just yeah. I saw that youth fest, you know, right? Yes, with youth fest, man, that was amazing, brother. We were there at the Cornerstone uh, Wilson's Theater, at the historic Wilson Theater, and man, brother, you know, we had kids in there, man, youth just. Just broken before God, crying mm. out to God, yeah. and just worshiping, celebrating, dancing. That was dancing and singing all over the building. You know, we had Alex Delgado, you know, okay. uh, another, you yeah. know, uh, uh, overflow AC guest, you know. And then we had uh, 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 Tyshawn, you know, Roland. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That brother, He's um, he was on staff at Elevation, you know, with Stephen Furtick. Yep. I'm not sure if anybody's heard of him, you know, uh, but, yeah. you know, you know, you know, <laughs> a little known guy. Um, and yeah. then also with Jensen Franklin, he's actually, you know, part of their church now, you know, but he's, you yep. know, doing evangelism. Came in, man, and just bought a word too for kids that are just hurting, you know, need healing, you know, those who are are constantly overlooked, you know. So yeah, yeah. It, it was an awesome week, brother. Yeah, so Lodo, what is what is Youth Fest? So man, thank you for asking that, bro. Youth Fest is, it, you know, Belleville. We 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 both pretty much grew up in Cornerstone, you yeah. know, and remember the the youth conferences we used to go to down in San Diego. You know, we take the kids down yeah. there, and those things can get really expensive, you know. Now, our kids, you know, a lot of our kids, you know, they they come from places where you don't have, you know, hundreds of dollars to fork out, you know, to send them, you know, out of town. Yeah. So we wanted to provide a conference here. We wanted to provide that same experience over here and not charge the kids, you know. So, man, mm-hmm. so Youth Fest is actually, you know, it's it's a conference for the whole Central Valley. We've had churches from everywhere. You know, we had hundreds of kids, you know, uh-huh. this week. And we've been this is our fourth year. And it's just awesome, brother, you know, to offer them a space where they can come and connect with other, you know, people, you know, youth, you know, in Christ, you know, and then just fellowship together and just celebrate Jesus together, you know. And then uh, the, the day before on uh, Youth Fest Fridays, Pastor, Pastor Franklin, you know, he um, he actually, you know, uh, uh, hosted a, a luncheon for the youth pastors. And man, he just pours into youth pastors. Yeah. And these these aren't just his youth own youth leaders and his own youth. But no, no, these are youth pastors, youth leaders from across the you know, across the valley, you know. So, man, brother, this mm. this week, oh my gosh, bro! I man. I honestly think this is po- the most powerful one out of the four years, you know. But yeah, so this, you know, it's it's a uh, it's sponsored by Cornerstone, man. You know, but I mean, it, honestly, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's put together by the whole valley, you know, of youth yeah, pastors and our leaders, and it's yeah, it's just completely kingdom, brother. You know, so yeah, it was it was fantastic this weekend. Now, again, I mentioned it, but I, I really need to emphasize it. Your daughter, Saeli, mm. she, I, I saw highlights. I'm like, she was just, her her stage presence, like, I have to say that because she was known years ago as a quiet, shy mm-hmm. young girl. But she, man, she stepped up, stepped up huge in her, her calling, just leading hundreds of youth and their adults are too. But man, she just tore it up. Amen. Yeah. You know, and, and she was only shy, you know, young and shy to the ones that didn't know her. Right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody that knows Saeli knows she's, yeah, you know, it. her and her mom, you know, are, are right there neck and neck with whoever's the loudest, you know, That's but, uh, but no, it, it was awesome, brother, just to, to have her up there, you know, helping lead worship, you know, and she's got some great leaders around her, brother. I mean, you've been there, you know, you've got Tati, you know, a, a pastor angel, you know, and a, under pastor Cindy, I mean, how, 
how do you not have that kind of presence, you know, under those, those leaderships, you know? So I just, I really thank God, man, you know, so we're looking forward to, to see what else God has in store. Speaking of brother, yeah. I know that you had a pretty cool event this last week. Yes. Our, our core team from Verge Collective got together yes. here at the house and we had, we called it a, a Verge Collective's Think Miss uh, Amen. gathering. Wow. So it was a Thanksgiving. I know we have uh, a lot of Christmas parties, but we mm-hmm. really wanted to come together and just say thank you for the team. Uh, we've had an awesome year of ministry. Amen. And believe God for more, but it was just great just hanging out, playing the White Elephant game. We add a new element to oh, the White wow. Elephant okay. game. Uh, we call it the wild card. So there's one person d- draws the W mm-hmm. in every round, no matter when it is, what round it is, and even if the gift was frozen, could still at any time. Wow. Yeah. So that becomes the hated person. But it was oh, a lot, lots goodness. of fun doing that. So thank you for asking. It was a great time with Verge. We were looking forward again for more. I got two questions. What's that? Explain to everybody what Verge is. Verge Collective is a is a uh, mi- worship ministry that that just facilitates we call it community capital unity mm-hmm. with various worship leaders from various churches and and musicians we come together and put on worship nights here in the valley yeah. we go a lot of times to different churches and yes. we just we just have the spirit unity and just do worship with the body of Christ and out of that there's been a core of of, of people being involved with us that are not on the worship yes. team but that are also happen organized yep. and being part of the ministry and oh, the yeah. ministry and, other, oh, other, yeah. and your, you and yourself uh, other people in this room have been part of that. Uh, so I I am very blessed and honored to be part of that with my wife and I for about more than 10 years now. Can you believe that? Man, amen, bro. And going strong, too. Exactly. You know, as a matter of fact, Philville, I, I want to take this time, you know, for a family that's watching, you know, and, and they might, you know, wonder like, hey, how can I be a part of that? And one thing is that Verge Collective actually travels. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, uh, we've you've done camps, we've done conferences, mm-hmm. we've done uh, uh, up in the mountains, retreats. We've, we've, we've traveled, we're coming together as Body of Christ, and we want to be part of of what God is doing in your church or your yes. local body or your event. And so that's what we're doing. And uh, we've been facilitating since the pandemic in yep. 2020. We started, Hey, let's get together. A lot of churches were closed and we like, let's get together when church is not happening in your church and let's come together and just worship together. And that's kind of what we did. Amen. Amen. So, so again, what Philip, uh, uh, you know, like he shared, this is, this is a, a community, a collective of different worshipers from different churches. So pastors, man, if you want to have this experience or this encounter at your church, where can they connect with you, bro? You can go in the description and we have a link below. Amen. Okay. And that's Verge Collective, right? And that's on Instagram, Facebook. All, all, all okay. of that, all that there. Awesome. Awesome. Because we, you, we got older generations who don't know the whole click thing and all that. So they're going to need some help uh, yeah, finding can. that address. Okay. Now, now, now my second question, brother. What was the the prize of the night with the elephant game? Which was the one that everybody was trying to get? There was these special brownies. Uh, that wow! Is- <laughs> <laughs> is that wrong? Okay. No, well, they were you special were brownies. The show? No, the RC's recipe. They're oh, actually my like, goodness. what were you yes. thinking, brother? Yes, <laughs> yes. Those are life changing brownies. Those are, yeah, those are, those are special bro- brownies. Those are life changing. <laughs> Come on, brother. Those are life changing brownies. Oh, uh, we had some left over. We took them to the church, man. They just devoured awesome. those things right there. Amen. But no, that that I think the gift was a. A blanket with my face. Just kidding. There was a blanket. Wow. <laughs> Chris's blanket and, and some other things. But I got my, <laughs> my cup with chocolate and everything. I'm very happy about it. Oh, that's awesome, bro. I know, man. That's awesome. Yeah, we're just having a great time in ministry, right? Lodo, I know we're talking about a lot of different things, but we mm-hmm. cannot move forward without pausing. It. And and know we've had a whole month here of, on Overflow yeah. about pastor's appreciation. But there at Cornerstone, you had the honor to do what? Man, we had the amazing honor of honoring a very special uh, couple, uh, really a family brother. You know, we got to celebrate our pastors, you know, there at Cornerstone Fresno. Shout out Cornerstone Fresno. Shout out Pastor Franklin, Pastor Cindy, and the whole family. Philville, you know, I know that we can sit here and just spend multiple episodes about talking how, you know, how much we appreciate them and and how much Pastor and Pastor Cindy means to us, brother. You know, as a matter of fact, man, um, you have such a long history there, brother. I would love to hear what you thought about it. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that that Cornerstone honored uh, Pastor Franklin, Pastor Cindy, amazing pastors. Uh, but you know, they're my, my spiritual parents. I've, I've yeah, I've been I've been part of 
the Cornerstone. I've been part of Cornerstone. I was fourth grade. I can't believe how many years now. Wow. Fourth grade. And they had fourth grade back then? <laughs> yeah, fourth grade. Yeah, normally you stop school at sixth grade. Wow. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I started ministry in Cornerstone playing the piano. I was like 11 or 12 years old playing yep. in the main church. And so when Pastor Cindy and Pastor Franklin came to Fresno, mm -hmm. I was 14 years old. So Pastor Cindy really was there. I, I, talk, I talked to her. I was with her in ministry about three to five times a week. Yeah. So she, she, they're really like just like family. And so I got my spiritual spankings from them. I got, mm. <laughs> I got to uh, learn yeah. a lot, a lot from them. All so thank us, you. Happy yeah. Pastor's Appreciation Day to the Franklins. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing, bro. And yeah. then just remember even the kids, man, because. You know, whenever a man of God, a woman of God steps out, you know, if they have family, it's not just them, you know, it's the whole family, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, brother, it was, it was a beautiful service, man. We missed Elder, though. Yeah. Elder Elder was, you know, he, he just uh, had some uh, uh, personal things that he had to yeah. take care of, you know. And so, but uh, but no, it was it was a fun time yesterday, man. But I know that we got an awesome show set up for yes, everybody. Yes, you we know, do. A great follow up to last week, right? Yes, we do have a, an awesome show. But, you know, you know what time it is? It's time for... It's your new makers and breakers. The first one up we have is a, a crazy tragedy took place of 25 LA sheriff recruits Lodo on a morning run. Man. An SUV came down and ran them all over, and the suspect that was arrested yeah. was released on a two million bond Thursday night because investigators, quote unquote, from New York Post is saying need more time to comb through the mountain of evidence against him. Well, wow. there's a mountain of evidence, but they need to have evidence to keep him arrested. I, I just, you know, it comes back to leadership. You know, I'll be very honest, uh, Philville. Th this was my concern, you know, when the election results came out, you know, on who, on who were, who were elected because, you know, regardless of how we feel about party and all that, there's no getting away or certain ideologies and their tendencies, you know, it's the same stripe. So I'm sorry to say, but if things don't change and leadership don't change the way they do things, this might not be the last tragedy that we hear about. Yeah. We need to continue to pray for them, but this Amen. is another example of how a lot of people are complaining about the crime. Yeah. But when people commit crimes, they're not being kept in prison or no accountability, no accountability. The New York, Post is reporting that a suspect in Colorado killed five people and, and injured 18 at a club by a 22 year old Anderson Lee Aldrich. Lolo, you had a lot to say about this. Uh, what do you What do you want to say? What a tragedy! Again, we need to pray for everyone that's lost a loved one. I, I, I'm a little bit confused because I I thought that we weren't saying names anymore of people who uh, commit these crimes for the sake of not having any more uh, copycats, you know. But it was such a tragedy. And on top of that, during the holidays, brother. Okay, Kanye West is making headlines again, Lodos. He says that he'll be selling his Adidas and other merch for Yay 2024 presidential, presidential campaign hmm. logo for $20. So get your $20 ready, Lodo. I know you're going to be throwing your, your endorsement there. Not really, but okay. Yeah, no, yeah. Can, can, <laughs> so Twitter, can I borrow $20? Uh. Yeah, I saw you some shoes. <laughs> and now it's time for another edition of the Elon Musk report that the Musk news. And here we go. I was pretty musky. <laughs> Man, I'm sweating too. Sorry about that. So Elon Musk is, he had a, I don't know if you saw this, he had a survey of who he should bring back on the platform and unsuspend their accounts. And one of them was Trump. Trump officially has won that survey and has been allowed to return to Twitter. Loda, you think he should be returned or what do you think this represents? Actually, man, I really don't care one way or another. I just want to see the polling for, should we bring terrorists back on Twitter? Oh wait, no, they are on Twitter. <laughs> should we bring murderers on? Oh no, they are on Twitter. There was no hey. polling for them. Was there? No, no. Yeah. I, it, it, there's a controversy saying that he is already uh, banning free speech himself. And he's saying who could the be new part censor. of it. Yeah, yeah, the new censor. That's mm -hmm. what you get. It free speech, right? What does that mean? Okay, so uh, I don't know about you. If you're a fan, there's a lot of there is a uh, a tragic news on the Power Rangers front. Did you watch Power Rangers when you were younger? 
Yes. Okay, yes. That I, was my first movie, bro. I know. That I ever you spent my, my own money on. Yeah, that's crazy. I wonder why Mighty why, Morphins, yep. Yeah, I wonder why you got where you got that uh, tattoo on, on the side of the Power Rangers logo. I'm wondering how you know about that tattoo. So oh, I don't you were barefooted. I saw it on your foot. Oh, I'm like, my oh my foot. gosh. Yeah, the hair was wow, co- you're a foot guy. Okay, the hair was covering it up, but all I, of a, I thought you were wearing socks, but the hair yeah. flew out of the way. And, I don't know why you're checking my feet up, but <laughs> that's good. <laughs> okay, the Power Rangers uh unfortunately lost a one of the original members, yeah, Jason David so Frank. Sad. Yeah, uh, dead by Fortunate suicide at 49. That was Tommy. Yeah, it was Tommy. That was yeah. Tommy. You know what? I, I didn't watch Power Rangers, but I know a lot of friends did. Why? Mm-hmm. Because I just felt Power Rangers was a rip off of Voltron. You know, Voltron was original, I think. But they were all vo- rips off of something. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anyways, the that's Z? Just, was it Z? What was the Voltron? Trends or Z? Trends. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I used to love drawing that. Google that. Trends or Z. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's probably not. Uh, very uh, politically correct now. A lot of those things. No, no. Yeah, they can't handle it, brother. Yeah. So go, go, Power Rangers. Rest in peace, uh, Tommy. Yeah. Okay. So moving on. I, you know, I love this. I mean, we get to save some money now uh, coming up for for Christmas. You know, our our president. Oh, you're talking about the great news. The Big great news. news. Yes. The positive great news. news. Yes. Uh, okay. Winter is coming, right? right? And here's a little quote from Biden. He just he, he's just basically making the case that if if you want Biden wants families struggling to afford gas and groceries to spend their paychecks on solar panels. Yes. Matter of fact, I think he has what is it like a rebate of seventy five hundred dollars? Yeah, and the average cost of solar panels sixteen thousand. Yeah, that's a ama- yeah. yeah. So, so, okay, let me get this right. So in order for us to get the savings of $7,500, us regular folk have to spend $16,000 first. That's, man, that's amazing. And, oh, wait a minute. Solar panels in the dead of winter? Yeah. And blizzards and everything? Yeah. Uh, good luck on the solar panels. Yes, yes, yeah. That's, well. I do have solar panels, but hey, it, it doesn't really help in the winter time. I'll tell you that. And this is the wonderful functioning of our government. See, we, we love the people in charge. Well, speaking of people in charge, well, somebody in charge, the assistant attorney general refuses to certify Arizona election wow. until questions are answered on the, on the Cary Lake. Uh, that's a Cary Lake uh, run, yeah? Oh, yeah, that's Cary Lake, uh, the wow. one, the, the underdog who was supposed mm-hmm. to win, who didn't win. But I don't know. I don't have enough information on that. It just looks kind of a... Uh, Suspicious. Yeah, see, and, and that's what I was gonna say. Doesn't matter what, what what you're affiliated with as far as party, who you prefer to win, and all that. I don't know how anyone could get around just the mountains and mountains of uh, shenanigans, you know, and question marks, you know, that this whole thing brings up. So I, I'm glad. I'm glad that they're putting a pause and and getting answers to those questions. So shout out to the assistant attorney general over there in Arizona. Yeah, and it's worth noting that. You shouldn't be banned for just questioning. Mm-hmm. I think it's okay to have questions. Yes. I think though I think it's concerning when you can't answer those questions. Yeah. Mike Pence photo is coming to the defense of Trump all of a sudden. What do you think about that? You heard you heard something about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's the whole um uh he's speaking out against the uh, special uh, investigator or counselor now that counsel that they got to investigate Trump um from the uh, DOJ. You know, he's saying that it's it's not right, you know. Yeah, right, Mike Pence. I mean, there was a lot of things that wasn't right that you should have been more vocal about. It's time for Geek Out Corner with Philville. Wakanda forever, Lodo. Not Anaconda. Wakanda. I finally did my homework. Did you do your homework? Wakanda? Um, no, not yet. Uh, some yeah. of us has to work. You know, uh, some of us, I, I yeah, know. You're yeah right. we don't. Yeah, I get it. I we get to it. do those things. Yeah. We, my mother in law came yeah. over and she says, "You guys want to go see a movie?" That's awesome. And so she was watching Mia, and so I'm like, "Hey, let's go." Amen. And so like we took the opportunity and we saw we got the the candy and everything. How was it? <sighs> it was so so good. I'm telling you, it was a, no. I enjoyed it. Now I I have to say this. Every movie now from Disney, there's a little bit of woke elements to it. So let's put woke on the shelf for a second. And let's take the story. I think in, in superhero movies, in order to really get good reviews, I feel like you need to, if you took out the superpower element, does the story still work? Oh, the story is amazing. I mean, Angela Bassett, she, she, she's going to be nominated for sure. There's rumors going out and going around. And and the main character Sheree, sure, the main character who 
now I cannot say her name right now. Mm -hmm. It's escaping me. But she was kind of like a novelty supporting character in the past. But she really led the movie very well. Mm. Uh, there were some great elements. Some things, a little, you know, just he's kind of it's 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 a fun. Uh, and it's definitely for more adults, I think, because uh, it's not it was a little more darker than normal. All the the funny stuff in the past, but the acting was so good. It kept me um, kept my wife and I just we just loved it. I yeah. Know. So I will have to say, though, speaking for those, the crowd who mm -hmm. does, you know, has those concerns that you were alluding to earlier. Yeah. You know, it is 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 it. Isn't that how indoctrinating works? You put a little bit of living in the bread, yes. you know, and so you know to try to separate it and all that. Like, of I, course, that's a you know that's I, I, a no brainer, you know. But you know, just just you know, giving a voice to to the other side of things, you let's know, do it. you let's, know. So I'll mention it. You know, yeah, it's it's you know, I, I think that's the point. I think that's what people it are concerned true. about. You know, because I was I was actually going to write um, uh, one of the Disney pages that uh, that uh, we're, you know that we're connected to on uh, on social media. I was going to ask him, like, man, am I ever going to be able to watch a superhero movie with one of my nieces or one of, you know, God willing, you know, a, a grandchild of mine? Or do I have to, like, close your eyes or sorry, you guys can't come watch this superhero movie, you know, with, with grandpa or, with you know, with uncle, you know. So, yeah, I'll tell you, I think that's, you know, no, I, I think it's legitimate. I, it's completely legitimate. Yeah. And let me tell you, the whole movie, the whole movie happened pretty much like. 99% done and, yeah. and then at the very a montage at the very end uh two it's literally like extra characters in the background you saw them like oh there was a couple I'm like they insinuated what type of couple they were mm -hmm. in the middle of everything just took place so subtle yes yes it's indoctrination yeah. my wife and yeah. I had a conversation like you kind of expect it to always be there I mean they have it in cartoons now yeah um so and and so again, again, yeah. speaking for the other crowd, that's the thing. We're we're just have to settle for that now, you know. Like yeah. like, sorry guys, you know, if you guys want, you know, you know, and and that's fine. But I think that's why a lot of people are 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 really protesting with their wallets now, you know. And you don't have people, you know, so yeah, that's much, true, you know. So I, that's that's the option too, and and that's something you know that that we, you know. So that's why I'm I'm not always you know oh, let's go you know watch a movie you know. Mm -hmm. But again, now that is the difference, right? This is the difference between cancel culture. And those of us who just want to go watch a good movie, if that movie is not a good movie and we don't agree that agree with that movie, we are not protesting to go fire people, right? That's, Bill, that's true, but you yeah, know, you Disney, know. there is a, a shakeup. If you heard about that, the CEO has been replaced from the former one who was yeah. there for years. And part of that equation, yeah, the bottom line is money. But some are saying that the, you know whole, why. the whole wokeism is, is costing them. Uh, a lot of money, but that's just just one angle to it. Loder, you're gonna say something? Oh, yeah, about? yeah. Actually, I I believe that they they pushed him out because he wasn't uh as vocal and pushing back against uh, the Florida. DeSantis. Yeah, the Florida. The Florida. Santos, you know, yeah. So I think it's that he wasn't woke enough. Again, Man, to my point. Yep. That's the difference, you know. And, hey, if we disagree, we're not trying to fire people. We're not trying to, you know, cut off people's life, you know, uh, uh, living, you know, but. You know, when somebody, you know, does something that they disagree with, oh my gosh, you know, so, yes. and then, you know, so it's, again, man, I, I say this because, you know, we both know about the story that just dropped too, not too long ago. Uh, I believe it's in Tehachapi, right here in our backyard. Yes. You know, we have the, the Satanic, you know, uh, Satanist Club, you know, in, mm. in elementary school, not, 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 not high school, not, yeah. not junior, you know, in elementary school. That's, the, you know, so. Yeah, so this this brings up a, a good conversation, you know. But you know, I it's, mean, this this is the world that we live in. Yeah, and this movie has generated two hundred eighty eight million in North America alone, five hundred forty six million globally to date. So yeah, they're going to make a lot of money from this. Uh, mm -hmm. And those of you out there watching, if it's for you, go watch it. Uh, if it's not, don't. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take uh, young kids for sure to that. And that's sad, man, because. Man, without those things, I'm sure it's a great movie. Like, it's not even necessary. Yeah. And it's sad that you got to choose like that. Yep. Okay. And that, well, that's it for. It's your new Breakers and Breakers. Wow, that that was a that was a great uh, newsmakers and breakers bought to you for uh, by Philville and Echo Light Media. Thank you, Philville, for that. Um, moving on to to the rest of this show, you know, like we we announced before. These these two shows, you know, back to back were very important, you know, and we wanted to address, you know, grief and loss, especially during this, the, the holidays. 
because again and again and again, the holidays aren't so happy for everyone, you know, but everyone can benefit from these shows, especially with this episode and our special guest. I'm so glad that she made time for us. I'm not going to waste any of your time or her time. We're going to move right into the extended conversation with Yovana Monroe. Welcome back, everybody, to Extended uh, Conversation. You know, this week we're bringing somebody in that I couldn't wait for you guys to meet. You know, we we love guests around here. You know, uh, last week we had a, you know, we we talked about our stories, uh, Philville and I, and you, you heard about our loss, you know, but we wanted to make sure that we equip all of you. You know, uh, like I mentioned before, you know, th- these these are the times that, that I really want to, you know, make sure that we're reaching those who's not having such a happy holiday. Cause they're the ones that's dealing with, you know, you know, empty chairs, you know, the missing present under the tree, you know? So today we have a wonderful guest that's going to join us. She's an expert, you know, on loss and grief. Uh, I, I'm not going to take it, take any of her thunder, uh, extended family. Please let us welcome Yovana Monroe. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Yovana. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Awesome. So, Yovana, uh, if you can, can you kind of just uh, uh, tell us a little bit about you for those, you know, that are joining uh, joining us today? Sure. My name is Yovana Monroe. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, I've been, <clears throat> excuse me, doing therapy since I've been licensed since 2009. So I've worked with families, uh, children, youth and couples. Wow. So um, I also taught at San Diego Christian College. I taught grief and loss. Wow. Wow. Okay. So we definitely had the right person in here with us today to talk about this. You know, uh, these are the times where, you know, we, we all experience loss throughout the year, mm-hmm. but for some reason it, it's during these holidays that, that, that becomes even more prevalent, you know, in our everyday lives, right. Where, uh, where we, you know, it becomes all too real again, you know, how much we, we miss them, you know, and all that. So, so in talking about loss and grief, you know, you know, it's, you can't help, but, you know, really think about depression, but, you know, I guess for my first question, can you explain to us if, first of all, is grief and depression, are they the same things or are those two different things? Well, there's definitely a lot of similarities. Grief and loss have a lot of similarities with uh, intense emotion. Sometimes individuals have loss of appetite, lots of sleep. Uh, Sometimes they sleep too little or too much. There's definitely some similarities. But one of the glaring differences between depression and loss is that with loss, there's like some bouts kind of like in waves that you can still have uh, Mm. joy. You can still have you can remember the person you still have glimpse of maybe happiness or you still have glimpse of um, a positive outlook or a mood where depression is a consistent Mm. and persistent uh, low. It's a consistent kind of sense of helplessness and worthlessness and despair, where sometimes loss doesn't have that. Uh, sometimes even in our loss, we still have hope, right? Yes. Or sometimes we still have, um, we can experience a, a joyful emotion where depression, there isn't that. There's kind of a sense of a wow. persistent loss and worthlessness that loss doesn't have. Okay, first, you know what you just did. You just signed yourself up for a second show okay. <laughs> because, you know, we're talking about loss and grief today. But wow, now that you're talking about depression, we're definitely going to, you know, and, and that is something, you know, family that we, we do want to uh, talk about in a future episode. But for today, thank you so much for explaining that. I, I, you know, I've never even saw it that way. Yeah. You know, it, it never crossed my mind that, you know, that, that first of all, that they're really different because okay. just just, you know, naturally, we just think they're both the same thing. So we put them in the same box, you know. But you did such a great job of defining, you know, the differences. So with loss, at least there's 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 those those uh, uh, those those areas of, of where we can really just grab, get back to hope yes. or experience joy again. You know, yeah. for, for the reasons that you, you you just mentioned. So you said that uh, that you taught, you know, you went to San Diego Christian. Uh, um, can you kind of give us a little bit about that? Sure. I mean, I've had the pleasure of I taught there for a little bit over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I had the pleasure of teaching um, people that were going into counseling, how to be able to be present and show empathy and show understanding to those who are grieving. Um, So I think sometimes we can learn a lot from a textbook, right? We can learn a lot of information, but we all have our stories of loss. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. We all have suffered grief. If we haven't, we will. Right. It doesn't yeah. exempt anyone. It doesn't discriminate anyone. We all experience loss in some capacity or the other. So sometimes we lose a loved one. Sometimes we can lose a marriage. Sometimes we can lose um, a dream or an ability or uh, we can lose our home. So even though we think of grief of, <clears throat> excuse me, losing someone, yeah. it's not just losing a loved one that sometimes we grieve. It yes. could be losing, like I said, a relationship. Or um, I know a lot of us, we just are still walking through COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people lost their health, their ability to breathe, their ability to function or go up a flight of stairs. So even though we talk about grief and loss of just kind of associated with losing a loved one. Yeah. We experience loss sometimes on a daily basis with different things in life. And sometimes that doesn't get acknowledged or doesn't get validated because it's not what we traditionally see as a loss. Yeah. So we have to be mindful that even if we don't lose a loved one, we could still be going through grief and loss. This, wow. You, you really just touched on something that I think we don't think about enough. Mm -hmm. And that's that grief comes in different uh, in different ways, you know. Right. And like you said, it's not just when we lose loved ones, but but I I understand that even even just losing a job is yes. like losing a loved one, isn't yes. it? Sure, sure. It's our ability to provide for our families. Sometimes yeah. it becomes a loss of our identity, yes. right? Because our job yes. sometimes is not um, always what we do. It's sometimes who we are. So I think sometimes there could be a lot of loss with losing employment or losing. Um, you know, a marriage, there's a lot of loss. And not only is it obviously the loss of the person who went through the divorce, but it's the children, right? The children yes. that are also impacted by that loss and then so on and so forth. So loss could come in different in different forms. Yeah. And, and, and that, you know, we're, we're going to get into the answers. We're going to get into some mm -hmm. resources. We're going to get, you know, to some of those things, you know, but I really want to lay this out, you know, and, and really get people to understand that, you know, uh, grief and loss is, is not just one type of thing that we mm -hmm. all go through. It, it's multiple. And, and that's actually good news in a way, because a lot of times, you know, we have loved ones that they lo they lost a loved one, right? Yes. And we weren't close to the other one, so so we, it, we kind of feel like, oh, I don't know what they're going through. Okay. Like, what do I do? And we kind of feel helpless. But when we understand that, wait a minute, we have faced loss. Mm -hmm. You know, we we faced loss in our lives. Maybe I didn't lose a loved one, but I remember when I lost my job. Okay. You know, I, I remember okay. when I you know lost you know this thing that that became so important to me. Okay. Losing it was like losing losing a loved one. So. I, I think it's so important for us to to really paint that picture, you know, sure. so that we can all at least kind of get on the same page with those sure. who, again, we feel so helpless. Right. And it gives us an ability to be empathetic towards yes. someone, right? Because even yes. though maybe we all haven't lost a parent or maybe we all haven't lost a child, which we can't even imagine what that would be like, but we can show empathy towards others and always love and respect them uh, and be able to identify that their loss is unique. And although we all experience loss, everyone experiences differently and everyone experiences experiences very uniquely. So there's no right or wrong way to grieve. Wow. There's no oh uh, timeline for grief. There's no uh, kind of handbook for how we grieve. Everyone's journey, um, even though we're, on the, we're all on the same road, everyone's journey is very different. So if we can, Yovana, I, I would like to, for you to take us into two places. Mm -hmm. The first place I, I'd like you to take us into is into the classroom that you that you're teaching mm -hmm. there at the at the at the college. Mm -hmm. um, day one, how do you explain you know uh, loss, uh, grief and loss, and, and, and what do you tell your students? And I know I'm summing up a whole semester, you know, in, in yeah. one day you know, or in, in about five minutes. But what what do you tell them? What do you tell those who 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 are who have the desire to help others with this? Well, I don't teach anymore, but what I used mm -hmm. to tell my students was we're, we're all wounded healers. All of us have experienced some sort of loss. Every, uh, all of us have experiences, experienced some sort of wound. So when people allow us into our heart, into their hearts, we have to be mindful to take off our shoes because we walk on gentle and fragile ground. So we have to be mindful, right? Not because I'm a therapist or because um, I'm a lay counselor or because I'm on this side of the desk makes me an expert, right? We just come alongside as wounded individuals. We come alongside others to help them learn, to help them grow, and to hopefully with a privilege, be able to help them heal, right? As used as vessels to help them heal. So um, 
It doesn't matter what side of the desk we're on. We have to remember that we're all wounded healers and we're all walking this journey together. So I remind them, don't forget your humanity. Even though you're going to learn a lot of theory, even though you're going to learn textbook knowledge, don't forget your heart. Because when somebody is going through loss, what they um, want experience is love and support. Maybe we might not have the right words. Sometimes we might not have the right intervention. Sometimes we might not have the right strategy, but we can show love and support. Um, and that's definitely what they need when they're, when they're hurt and wounded. You can't teach experience, right? No. Oh. And yet experience oh. is the greatest teacher Yes. in many cases, right. you know, the second place I want you to take us to please, Joanna, is um, to that place where you are the one that's uh, helping somebody mm-hmm. work through grief and loss. What, 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 you know, I know this is a really huge question, but what are some of the things that you tell them? Um, it's not even so much telling them. It's being able to hear them. Excellent. Point. So it's yes. being able just to be present, to be um, to be there um, and just being able to now help them tell their story of loss, to be able to remember the person or the event or the circumstance that, uh, behind the loss, to be able to be a, a listening ear to be um, understanding, uh, to be able to not only create empathy, but be able to to normalize their situation that what they're going through is okay to go through. They they don't have to, um, you know, respond a certain way. Sometimes individuals say, well, if they're not crying, they're not grieving. Well, that's not true. Everyone Mm. grieves differently. Or maybe they've cried already for six months. They shouldn't cry anymore. Well, that's not true. They can cry as long as they would like. So. Everyone just being able to meet them where they're at and be able just to allow them to tell their story and just be present and being able to hear their story without judgment, without uh, criticism, without having the right answer. Because when someone has lost someone they love, what can I possibly tell them that will make them feel better? So true. You know, what can you possibly do that will make the pain go away? You, we can't. We can't tell them a perfect answer. We can't tell them a perfect quote. We can't tell them maybe a perfect scripture, right? We can't tell them the perfect thing. Sometimes what we just need to do is walk alongside them and listen to their story and not be quick to be able to give an answer. So, wow. So if I hear you correctly, don't feel like you have to have an answer. Right. And uh, don't. I, you know, and I, and I've learned that, you know, um, is, it, it, is even, even not, don't even tell them everything's going to be okay. Right. You know, right. because sometimes that comes across the wrong. Right. We just don't know where they're at. And really it's not about what we know. Right? right. And it's not about what, you know, how we can help, you know, it's about what they need. Right. And I don't think that we truly appreciate that. The important thing is to find out what they need and, and mm-hmm. really how much, how important it is for us to listen, to find that out. Right. Because if we're too t- busy talking, we're not listening. Yes. You know, we're not listening, you know? Right. So, so, you know, I, you, you said earlier that you don't teach anymore, uh, anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I know this because mm-hmm. I actually know what you do do, you mm-hmm. know? And, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, um, I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, when I found out about what you do and we have a mutual connection, mm-hmm. which is my wife, you know, and I wanted to tell you, thank you so much. You know, uh, since you, you've come in, I mean, she, she's coming home with uh, smiling a lot more and all that, mm-hmm. you know, but I also want to tell you that my wife is a, is a strong lady. Mm-hmm. So you throw on any responsibility on her right. back as you can throw yes. as much as you can. <laughs> she's you <know>? amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. You know, but, uh, but, but the, another thing that I know about you, and, and and you're kind of getting me fired up when you're talking about presence, mm-hmm. about presence and, and just being present. Right. Isn't it amazing how that that just speaks to probably the most important part of our relationship with God? Right. I know that you have a relationship with mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me about that and how that plays a role in what you do in, in, in helping others, you know, uh, go through their processes? Sure. I mean, I think we talked about sometimes our job, right? And I can honestly say, um, being a therapist, it's not what I do. It's it's who I am because yes. of Christ. I show empathy. I show understanding. I show um, grace. I show compassion because of who he is in my life, because mm. he has shown that first to me. So um, 
I find it an honor and a privilege. Um, I would do my job even if I didn't get paid because it's an wow. honor to walk alongside someone that yes. is in need. Um, so I don't find it as an employment. I really find it as um, my mission because that's Amen. the um, really that's the 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 heart that God has given me to to be able to come alongside others. So I find it a privilege. I think um, what I do is uh, like I said, it's not because of who I am, but it's who. It's who Christ has made me to be. Thank you, God. Amen. You know, and that and that that is so beautiful. You know, and like you said, man, it, it's if we they just need us to be present. They right. they just need us to be present. They, we don't have to come in with all the right. answers and all that. You know, and I thank God for the heart that He's given you. You know, just in a short time, I've gotten to know you, Ivana. I already know that God's given you given you an amazing heart and, and, and the right one for for like you know, I mean. That, you know, for your job, you yeah. know, but, but like you said, this really isn't a job for you. It's your joy, right. you know, right. to, to, to do this, um, because again, this is a part of who you are yeah. and who Christ has made you. So, so now, um, uh, you know, there, there's, there's people that's watching this, you know, and they're, and they're like, I have a loved one. I have a loved one that's going through things, you know, uh, and then there's those who's, you know, you know, all, all everything you guys are saying that, that that's great and everything. But I'm still hurting. Mm -hmm. What you know, like, 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 how does that even help me? So, Yamana, if you don't mind, if if you could look to the camera, sure. And if you can talk to both of them, let's talk to the first one. You know, who has a loved one that's going through something, and they mm -hmm. they want to help, but they feel helpless. Okay. Um, definitely reach out to those around you. Reach out to those that either your pastor or your medical provider or even the back of your insurance card where you can look at mental health services, reach out to someone because uh, there is help. There is people that are willing to support you and to help you and to be there for you. You just have to take that first step to reach out. That's all you have to do. Just reach out. And now the people who are going through it right now, they mm -hmm. they're experiencing loss and grief. You know, like I said, Philip and I, we, we, we shared our, our, our losses last week. What do you tell them? For those that are experiencing loss, I would say keep trying to put, if you possibly can, even taking one tiny step in front of the other and continue to mm. walk through it. You're never going to walk. You're never going to get over it. It's not something um, because we come, be, we become acceptance of our loss never means that we forget our loss. So it's vital that we remember that it's something that we're going to walk through the rest of our lives, right? Um, it's kind of like, a scar and sometimes we have scars correct yeah. and if we allow it to heal if we allow that wound to heal then it can become the strongest part of us so um all you have to do is try to continue to hold on to christ continue to reach out to those around you continue to reach out to support or to professionals or to support groups or to your pastor or to your friend or to your neighbor or to your family member, reach out to others and just put one tiny step mm -hmm. in front of the other. And like I said, it's, we're walking through this valley of shadow of death, right? We just continue to walk through it. You walk through it. You're never going to get um, completely over it. You're not going to forget it, no. but you're going to continue to live through it. You, you you said something right there at the end, and that I think I think is very important for for people to really get come to grasp with. You're never really going to get over it. Mm -hmm. For many, that sounds daunting. Like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? I'm going to stay in this? Like, I, this mm -hmm. is how I'm going to feel all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it, are they going to continue to experience the pain like like they are, or or is there is is does it let up? What does does it change at all? You know, as that you're coming out of the, the grief. Sure. I mean, it's like losing a limb, correct? Mm -hmm. It's like li losing um, a function of if your arm gets amputated, wow. you learn how to you learn how to live without it. Yes. I mean, you're, you're not going to ever get over the fact that you don't have your arm because you're always wow. going to remember it. I mean, yes. it becomes like a snow globe effect, right? When that mm -hmm. snow settles, life will shake it up. That will remind you. Yeah. So when I talk about getting over it, it's, it's not something that we have an end and say, okay, by this state, yes. it won't hurt me again. Or I won't remember it. Like I used to, by this state, um, I should be better now. It's not something we, this we have so an good. end in sight. Yeah. It's something that we continuously walk through and we just learn how to deal with it in a sense where like the arm that's missing, yeah. you learn how to maybe live with, 
without that use of that arm, but you continue to live. Yes. So it's being able to say there's not an end in sight, mm. but I will continue to walk through it and live through the live through it. Amen. Well, you know, one, one thing I would add to that is uh, as a matter of fact, I was thinking earlier just about people that, that do go through to grief, loss or any any type of experience that that hits them in that way. It's it's a uh, you know, I was encouraged. You know, I'm a minister, mm -hmm. you know, so I was encouraged. You know, we deal with death a lot, you know, and I encourage sure. people that, you know, you're, you're never going to get over it. You know, you're never going to get over that person. And when you when you move forward, it, it, it's going to be hard. And that pain is still going to be there that, mm -hmm. like you said, the lip, miss, missing limb. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there. But but here's what happens is, is that you, 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 you know, that pain doesn't get any easier, but you get stronger. Yes. And so yes. your, your yes. strength outgrows that pain so that you're able to 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 move along now. And it's kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, when you're a kid and you have certain sicknesses that used to get the best of you. Right. But as you grow up and you become an adult, your immune system is completely different. Your body, you know, it, it is different. And and now mm -hmm. those things that used to practically destroy you right. when you were younger, it right. doesn't anymore because you kind of right. outgrew it. Right. Right. You know, but th 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 those bacteria, th those things are still there, mm -hmm. you know. So just like, you know, the pain. We, we talked about the occupational. We talked about spiritual. Let's get practical. Mm -hmm. What are some, do you have any uh, uh, tools or are there any practices? Are there any things that... That you we can put in 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 the viewers' arms, you know, or in their hands, you know, that can really help them, you know. And I think you, you could address both crowds, you know, help them, help others, you right. know, who are going through right. grief, or help those who are going through right. grief themselves. So those that are supporting someone that has lost a loved one, I would say, love them in action. So Amen. you know, continue to be present, um, anticipate their needs. Maybe someone has gone through a loss. Invite them you know, to come and have coffee with you, yes. you know, take them a meal, help them watch their children, you know, um, mm. encourage them. If you ask them, if you can go and um, clean their home, yeah. you know, uh, put gas in their car. I mean, sometimes when someone's lose, someone has lost someone, we say, well, tell me if you need anything. Sometimes when someone is going through severe loss, they can't think, yeah. they can't think clearly. They can't um, express maybe their needs. So anticipate their needs that they might have. You know, love on them in action. So um, let your love come out through maybe acts of service where they can say, hey, let me love on you and let me go and take you a warm meal. Let me go and sit with you and let's talk about, you know, um, how you're doing today in this moment, mm -hmm. you know. And so just love on them and, and support them in a tangible way. Um, and then most importantly, don't forget about them. Yeah. Sometimes I heard an analogy the other day that talks about like losses when you're driving in the freeway and you see an accident, everybody turns for a little bit and then they keep driving along. So we don't want to be those people that just keep driving along. We want to be able to be present, get off our car, go to that person in need and be there and love on them and take care of them. So we just don't want to forget someone that is grieving. And then sometimes, you know, after maybe a funeral or maybe after you know, a memorial service, then a couple of days later, people check on them. And a couple yeah. days later, they might check on them less and then less and then less and then less. So remember them, remember them, especially like we were talking about. Sometimes this is the happiest time of year for most people, but for a lot of people, it's the hardest time of year. So remember them to, you know, um, check in on them, take them a meal, love on them, um, be present with them. And just to remind them that they are loved. Remind them that they are loved. Um, one thing that I can encourage someone that is going through loss is remember that even though you feel alone and even though you might feel like you're in this um, just kind of abyss of sadness and grief and despair, even though you feel like that, you're not. There's people around you that love you, that care for you, that are there to support you um, and that are there to help you walk walk along this difficult road. So I would encourage them to reach out to someone. Yes. Even if you don't feel like you want to get out of bed, get out of bed and call a friend, you know, call your pastor, call your doctor, call, you know, um, there's a lot of support groups online. Try to find a support group, someone that can support you because when we tell our story, there's power in that. There's power when we tell our story because we realize that we might not be the only ones going through loss, that there's other people around us that are wounded that need each other. Talking about the practical, mm -hmm. you know, I guess we get into some of the biological, 
you know, are there some things that they can do physically? Those who are going through grief, Yovana, that that they can do such like exercise or maybe sure. even keeping up with meals and all that, because I yes. think those are things that yes. are neglected. And, right. and those who's in, in the midst of that, the abyss that you talked about, mm-hmm. you know, that if, if they just, like you said, put one foot in front of yes. the other and just do those small yeah. things. What, what are some of those other small things you can talk about? Sure. I mean, um, even just trying to get out of bed, you know, having a breakfast, sitting at a table, you know, trying to take a bath, a warm bath, trying to exercise or take for a walk, maybe. Um, some of those things biologically and physically, they help us, you know, those good endorphins come into, um, mm-hmm. you know, our mental state. So even doing those practical things, leaving the house, yes. you know, um, is important. Just getting fresh air, being able to, if you haven't, you know, attending church, going to a church service, there's power in unity yes. when people are united in the power of Christ. Right. So even if you can't go to the church physically, join online. You know, go online and see a service, listen to worship music, you know, read the word of God. And sometimes it's hard when people are grieving because um, sometimes it's difficult to read the word of God, right? Sometimes it's painful to read the word of God. But even in your sorrow, even in your anger, even in your despair, I want to remind people that God is good. Even in that, even if we don't feel it, even if we don't think it, even if we can't experience it or touch it or understand it, he is good and he is there. He's walking right alongside you. Wow, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. Thank you so much, Ioana. Mm. I want you to share one thing, please, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, yes, you've gone to the school. You've, you've even mm-hmm. taught the class. But what are some, what, if you don't mind, you know, because we over here at Overflow EXT, we believe in the power of a story. Sure. Can you share us your story with grief? Sure. Um, um, so we were newly married, my husband and I, and um, we, of course, a year into our marriage, we were excited to try to get pregnant and we found out we were pregnant. And of course, I told everybody because... I felt like that's what you do. You tell everyone when you first find out you are pregnant and um, went to our first appointment and they couldn't find a heartbeat. And I was like, they said, well, maybe um, you're wrong on your dates. Just come back in a couple of weeks and we'll try to find, um, a, try to see if we can hear the heartbeat then. So we waited a couple of weeks and I was going to have an appointment the next day. And I talked to my grandfather. He was a godly Christian man. And um, I called him and I said, Abuelito, um, grandpa, can you please pray for us? Cause tomorrow we're going to a doctor's appointment and uh, they say they can't hear the heartbeat. And so he said, of course I'll pray for you. God is faithful and good. Believe in him. So I talked to him about nine in the morning at 11 o'clock that morning. I got a phone call that he had passed away of an aneurysm just like this. Um, He passed away. Anyways, the next day we went to the ultrasound to see if they can hear a heartbeat. And I remember sitting in the, in the room and the door was open after they had done the ultrasound and the nurses were talking and debating what kind of salad to get. You know, should I get a Caesar salad? Should I get a chicken salad? And I told my husband, they're debating what kind of salad to get. And we're waiting to hear if our pregnancy is vital and if my if our baby is okay. And as a therapist, that was very, um, I think, sobering to me, because as a therapist, I felt like sometimes somebody would be in front of me and. Not that I wasn't empathetic or understanding, but I would be like, okay, we have 20 minutes left. We have 10 minutes left. We have five minutes left because I didn't understand what they were going through. The world kept going, but my world had stopped. The doctor came in and he said, you know what? Um, Just sorry to inform you that there is no heartbeat. You're probably going to miscarry in a couple of days. And I said, well, my grandfather just passed away the night before. so." I'll have to, I'll have to see, and I'll have to make another appointment. So three days later, I was giving my grandpa's eulogy. And I said, it doesn't matter if you lose someone at 93 years of age, or you lose someone at three months of conception. Loss is hard. Loss is very hard. It doesn't matter if you're older, you're younger. It doesn't matter. Even if I didn't help 
hold the baby in my hands. The idea that I was going to be a mom immediately when I saw that I was pregnant immediately gave me a connection. And loss is hard. Loss is extremely hard. So I gave my grandfather's eulogy and I told the audience, um, it doesn't matter where you're at in life. It doesn't matter what stage you are in life. Know that grieving is difficult and we will all experience it. And if we haven't, we will. And I hope more than anything, just like it sobered me, just like it made it opened my eyes, because although I had taught grief and loss, I had never really experienced it until I went through it. And I taught it differently because I didn't mm. teach it from my head. I taught it from my heart because I know how difficult it is to lose like my grandpa and the child that I was bearing um, within a couple days. So, you know, like I mentioned, um, we all experience loss to different degrees and not all loss is the same. Not all loss is the same. I can't even um, begin to say that the loss of maybe my job or something like that might compare to the, a father or a mother losing their child. I mean, that's just, uh, I can't even fathom. But we have to understand that we all experience some degree of loss and all of us are wounded healers and we need each other to heal. Wow. You know, and I, I wish I asked you that question at the beginning of the show. Um, and that's that's a personal thing for me. I uh, have somebody that's very precious, very not just near my heart, but in the center right there. And she's experienced, you know, miscarriage this time last year. Mm -hmm. And it's still so raw. Sure. You can still hear the raw pain mm -hmm. and the agony. That she still feels, you know, go through the whole why God and this, this and that. But to the point where there's an anguish every time there's a birthday party mentioned sure. or a new baby announce, okay. announcing. These are pains that we never really get over, you know, and, um, you know, I had to stand there and, and really just, you know, you know, as a family, just all we can do is just love on them. Right. You know, and just, just remind him that we're going to be right here. Right. When you're ready to get up, right. we're right here. Right. But if you want to lay down right. and if you want to cry right. and if it, if you just want to grieve, mm -hmm. it's okay. It's all right. We're right here with you. We're right here with you. You know, um, but thank you so much for everything that, uh, that you shared today. You know, um, I really believe that this is this is really ministering to to so many, you know, across you know the internet, you know, and and, and I pray that everyone that that that's that's tuning in that, you know, as a matter of fact, for those of you that 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 are viewing, you know, family, I really want to encourage you that you know just find people that you know, you know, you, you could throw a rock and you you hit somebody that 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 that's facing grief. And share this with them. I, you know, I, I, we don't, Phil and I, we don't even care if you subscribe or not. This thing about those things right now, just share this thing. Get this thing to the person that that you know you're sitting there. And he's like, you know what? I know somebody that's going through something. You know, Lotso, thank you for sharing. You know, for bringing this up. You know, these last couple of weeks. You know, and but share these. These are answers that they need. You know, and sometimes, you know, for us, some of us, we just want to grieve alone. We want to we want to just grieve to ourselves, you know. And so this is a great way to get this into their hands, get this, you know, so they can at least watch this on their own. And, and I know that they can be blessed. You know, Yvonne, um, this is such an important topic. And, and, and this is a long topic. There's no way we're going to fix everything in one sitting, you know, on one episode. But, but you know, and, and the fight continues you know, but we're not alone. You know, uh, uh, I asked you if you can if you can pull together some resources so we can put things sure. in in everybody's hands, you know, and all that. And, you know, so so can you go over uh, over that at this time? Sure. If I can just go back to kind of my story of loss. Yes. Um, the one thing I said is we as soon as we found out we were pregnant, we told everyone. And so um, yeah. the thing that was hard is to tell everyone we weren't pregnant. But yeah. there was healing in that because mm -hmm. people started saying, you know what? I've had a miscarriage too. You know what? I understand what you're going through. And nobody had talked about it. Nobody knew. So there's power in sharing our story. There's healing in. 
Yes, yes. I'm so sorry. I, you, you, you're you hitting something that, that is just flowing right now. So I don't want to just, just, just go past this. There's so many out there that has dealt with miscarriage. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think possibly that might be the most neglected grief. I didn't understand how much we neglect this type of grief or this, uh, this area of grief until we went through it as a family, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, so can you, like, you know, you said that, you know, it, it's healing, you know, to share with other people. But there's a lot of people who they think, mm-hmm. oh, well, they didn't have the baby. So it's really not that big of a loss right. to them. They didn't carry them full term, you know, so it really wasn't a big loss. That is not true, is it? No, not at all. I mean, loss is, like we said, it's painful. It's individual. And it's theirs. Yeah. And it's theirs. It's their loss. So um, all loss should be validated. It yes. should be respected yeah. and it should be really identified you know it should be really acknowledged because we shouldn't be able to grieve alone yes, we shouldn't it, yes. grieve alone and when people start saying their story from miscarriages or really to, to be quite honest different losses that mm-hmm. we might experience we start yeah. realizing that there's others have that have experienced similar losses as yeah. ours so it it's hopefully it reminds us that like we said, we're all wounded healers. Yes. We all have experienced some sort of loss. Wow. And although we might feel like we're alone, like we're the only ones going through this loss or this hardship. I just want to remind everyone, although you feel that way, you're yeah. not. Amen. There's people around you that um, could support you, that could love you, that could be present with you and that possibly have gone through something similar to you as well. So uh, tell your story. There's power in that. Yes. Um just want to make sure that people know that there are places that um, that are there to support some places that um, can be potentially helpful is um, grief.com. It's a place where you can central Valley where they can get information regarding groups. Awesome. Uh, there's also another website, which is called uh, griefshare.com mm. or findhelp.com. But I would encourage them to, you know, if they feel like they're not able to wake up in the morning and they feel like, uh, there's too much despair that they can't feel like they can go any longer. Reach yeah. out to your medical provider, reach out mm. to uh, mental health services, either through Fresno County Department of Behavioral Health. Reach out to the back of your your insurance that gives you information regarding mental health services. Just reach out to someone. Just reach out to someone. That first appointment, that first call sometimes wow. is the hardest, yes. but it's the most powerful one mm. because it's the first step towards getting support, even if it's professional support, to make sure you get the support that you need. So also, if somebody is dealing with such despair that they feel like they can't go on any further, maybe the despair has become so overwhelming that they themselves have thought of maybe wanting to hurt themselves or harm themselves or even take their own life. Um, I would encourage you dial 911 if you feel like it's an emergency. Yes. Make sure you get help. Make sure you call. Um, there's also a suicide crisis line, which is 988, where you can get resources wow. and get support from that as well. Another place that you can access support is um, it's called Exodus Recovery. So it's called Crisis Stabilization Number, and that's 559 453 1008. Again, that number is 559 559- Four five three one zero zero eight, and it's called Exodus Recovery. So there are places out there. Like I said, sometimes the hardest step is getting that first phone call or taking um, that first initiative to talk to your pastor, talk to your family members, talk to a friend. But sometimes that could be the most pivotal step towards creating change and healing and growth moving forward. Amen. Amen. And I love what you said earlier about church. Mm-hmm. Is, is is everyone get get around a healthy community? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, uh, uh, getting around people who, who's going to help you forward and and, and mm-hmm. really carry you because there's a lot of times in, in in this valley that we can't even walk. Mm-hmm. You know, and somebody's just going to have to hold us up and carry us through. And what I what I mean by that is in prayer. There is right. such power in prayer, you know, and so get get a, a healthy community around you. And speaking of church, I, I want you to share with them what you share with me. Uh, I'm not sure if you brought the information in today, Yovana, but but about the um, the ministry there at People's Church. Yeah, there's a I don't know the exact name, but at People's Church, if you mm-hmm. call, I'm sure their their front desk they can mm-hmm. give you information regarding their grief recovery groups as well. 
Yes. yes. And, and so again, and, and these are people who's gone through grief. Yes. As a matter of yes. fact, the, the, the leaders of this ministry definitely are well, well, well uh, acquainted with grief, but mm-hmm. they're also well acquainted with how to move through grief, you know? And, and like Yvonne is saying, take all of these resources, beloved, and utilize them, especially you who are right there in the middle of the abyss. You're yes. in the darkest moment. And, and, and gosh, what if all you have to do is just that one phone call, mm-hmm. just that one phone call or just clicking on, on that one website. And, and if you're if you're too weak to do it, ask somebody to do it for you because you are worth it. I know that you feel alone. I know that. When you lose one person, there's that one person in your life that when you lose that person, you, th- you, you think you lost everybody. That there's nobody else there with you. you know, and, and nobody, nobody you know, understands where you're at. And, 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 and you think like, you know, because they never went through what you went through, there's no way. But we just learned today there's different types of griefs, but they all have the same effects. They all have the same effects and, 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 and different effects, but we all experience them. Every single one of us that goes through grief experience those same effects, maybe in different uh, order, maybe at, at, at different volumes, but we all go through it. And if you would just open up just a little bit, because you know what grief is? Grief steals your oxygen. Grief steals your joy. Grief steals your strength. Grief is something that chokes you out. And if you would just open up just a little bit to let that little air in, just a little breeze. And you'll never know that that just might be the smile that you need. I share my story with you all the time. I remember when I was laying on that hospital bed, ready to check out. I didn't want to be alive. Doctors are fine and say, hey, Lotso, can you feel this? Can you feel that? And I can feel it, man. You know, please leave me alone. Stop trying to keep me alive. I I got what I wanted because I wanted to die. I did not want to be here. I lost everything I thought. And there was nobody cared. Nobody understood. But something in my heart. I remember my brother-in-law said, Lotso, we're here for you. We care about you. And I was screaming at him. What do you mean? Everybody, you don't know nothing about, about me. You, you, just, you married into my family. You don't even know who I am. What are you talking about? And one little spark in my heart. What if he's right? What if he's right? And I'll never forget it. Something changed. You know what? I'm going to fight. And I'm going to let them fight for me. So I started responding. Because if he's right, if, if there is hope at the end of this, I want to know, but if there's not, I'll take myself out. So I started complying with the doctors, answering their questions. Yes, I can feel that. Yes, I can see that. Yes, I can. Yes, yes. 28 years later, I sit before you with Yovana as two winded healers offering the same hope that got her through her story and got through got me to mine and I can't wait till how it helped you get through yours Giovanna is there any final thoughts you have for us um can would I be able to pray absolutely we would never have to ask us about mm-hmm. that absolutely okay. please Let's bow our heads precious father God we know you are the way maker the miracle worker the promise keeper God you're the light in our darkness God I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would remind um, these listeners, perhaps that are wounded, that are grieving, that are full of loss, maybe of despair, maybe of hopelessness. God, I pray that you would breathe life into them, that you would be able just to take them out of the abyss of despair and that you would set them on holy ground. I pray that you would remind them that you would shout to them, that you would put light on them and remind them that they are precious, that they are loved and that they are cared for by your holy hands, God. I just pray, Emily, Father, that you would just bring healing to their hearts. I pray that you would help them walk through this journey and be able to find light at the other end, God. So just be with them, heal them, and bring joy to their hearts and remind them that there is a plan and a purpose for their life and that there is hope in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I pray that you are all blessed and please remember our wonderful guest, Yovana Monroe, in your prayers as she reaches to all the youth in our community and their families. 
I could see why she does what she does. Yeah. And she helps so many people. And again, reflecting on last week's episode on our personal grief. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I could, I could see the, why the need is for somebody like her. She yeah. talks to everybody mm-hmm. and I, I'm just, I'm so, so excited that she was part of overflow. And I, I just pray that I know God's going to use, use what she said, talked about. Yeah. Man, bro, I mean, even even just last week's episode, you know, we got the comment, you know, from a first responder, you know, who 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 you know got got so much help, you know, from from last week, the encouragement and all that. I can't wait till he sees this episode, brother. Yeah. You know, and it was just, you know, the, the resources, you know, the help, you know, and all that and you know, with, with with things like this, you know, there's there's a practical side of it that's ignored a lot. So I'm so glad that she got to talk about that. Yeah. You know, and it, obviously we both know the answer is Christ. God created the heart and only God can make it whole. Thank you so much for being part of Overflow's Holiday Grief Series. Make sure you catch last week's and thank you for joining us today. As always, for the extended conversation with with us. And we look forward to you joining us next week. Bada. We just hope that you guys are having a great Thanksgiving. And we'll see you next time. God bless. Love you. You've been listening to Overflow, the extended conversation, obliterating social norms, and overrunning the cultural corrosion with righteous rhetoric and common sense. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit us up on social media at Overflow EXT. Lord bless, and we'll see you next time on Overflow, the extended conversation.